We're moving on to a, another uh, review here, a light review, non-spoiler, of the new What We Do in the Shadows TV series. Yes. This actually also premiered at South by Southwest. And uh, there, I have you looked at any of the reactions out of South by? Mm-hmm. Oh. They're mostly positive. Okay. Um, yeah, mostly extremely positive, even more positive than I am. I'm pretty positive on it. Because I'm pretty positive, too. Yeah. Um, do you want to briefly explain what this is for folks who don't know about yes. what we do in the shadows? Uh, so this show is based on and in the same universe as the film created by Taika Waititi and Jemaine Clement, who doesn't love them as a duo. They have worked together on um, uh, Taika directed episodes of Flight of the Concords. Uh, why did I just lose the name of the movie? Jermaine... Jermaine starred in Eagle vs. Shark, which was Taika Waititi's first feature film. So they've worked together for a long time. And they came up with this brilliant, brilliant vampire comedy that is one of my favorite horror comedies of all time. Yeah. Mockumentary style follows vampires living their mundane lives. TV show does the same thing. Vampires, mockumentary, mundanity. But in a new city, they take it to Staten Island instead of New Zealand. New vampires. Wonderful new cast. My favorite being the great Matt Berry who is such a gem. But yeah, it's the it's basically the same prospect, these old ass vampires dealing with modern nonsense. Uh, they give it a little bit more of a hook here because they have been, you know, given the task of taking over the new world. <laughs> and so they don't they're not just hanging around. They've got a job to do yeah. and they're going to do it goofily. So you liked it. I did. I did. I'm pro it. I like the new cast a lot. I love Matt Berry. I'll watch anything as long as he gets to drop F-bombs. Uh. And um, I don't think it's 100% there. It's not quite as good as the movie yet. Yeah. But I could see this being one of those shows where the cast and everybody really grows into their chemistry and it becomes like an exceptional comedy. Okay. Um, I think I'm kind of in line with you but maybe a little more positive which which is interesting because one of the things that you focused on is that in this new series they have a mission yeah. and that mission should feel like the through line from episode to episode I'm not I know that it's been stated but I don't feel it yeah. you know when I went from I've watched four episodes now and when I went from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 it was more of just like the mini compartmentalized things that were getting to me most. I don't necessarily feel a build, but that also doesn't mean I don't love what I'm watching. Like I, I can't get enough of this. This is one of those scenarios where I don't want to leave these characters and I don't want to leave these world, <laughs> this world. And I'll watch them do. I will watch them do anything, like absolutely everything and anything, and I will enjoy myself. I love how this feels just like the film. Like, yeah. When this show started, the very first scene, I felt like it was a continuation. I mean, obviously not with the characters, but I feel like I never stepped out of the world of what we do in the shadows, the feature film. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And it, you know, the first episode was written by Jermaine Clement, directed by Taika Waititi. So it is right at home. It I, to me, it did lose a little of that flavor as as new directors came on to sub. No, Jermaine directs the next three, and it's written by other people. That's when it felt. Slightly different, but not in not like jarringly. But I could just feel the different writers. I but I think it's great. There are like the films. People are going to be like quoting one lighters at each other from the show, and I'm going to have so much fun doing. There's so, so many of those. I know. <laughs> um, it looks like Taika directed episode one. Uh, Jermaine did episode two. He did episode three, and he also did episode four. Correct. Um, some of the stuff that I loved the most, like. You, I, you picking a favorite because that, that's what happens here when you have a big ensemble. Like you can't help but to pick a favorite. And I think at this point in time, I have to lean towards Colin Robinson. <laughs> I got oh. such a kick out of him, and it was so it it felt so different to me. Yeah. He's played by uh, I, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce his name. Uh, Mark Proksh. I, yeah. I I would assume that's the correct pronunciation, but. <laughs> <laughs> just like pro prox you're great all right uh you're great the timing of that the timing yeah. of the jokes and the way he walks around and there's there's a certain little thing that develops with him i believe it's in episode three that i kind of got a kick out of yeah. three into four maybe actually i think it's just three but he plays um 
I, I mean, it's not a spoiler to explain the kind no. of vampire he is. So he plays a, uh, a energy vampire, an energy vampire. He's able to walk around in the day and he f- he feeds off of people's boredom. Is that specifically like, what it is? He feeds on their energy and leaves them bored and like, leaves them sort bored. of semi catatonic. So he, he basically like, like or, talks or annoyed them. or annoyed. Yeah. yeah. Talks them. He basically talks the, them to death and like. He he wraps them up in really long, boring conversations yeah. and sucks their energy. Or he so, sits there sharpening a pencil over and over and over again. But it's like applying that idea to the cubicle office yeah. setting is absolutely genius because that's one of the scenarios that it's like it would explain what life is like in a real cubicle style office today. And it's something you would never think of. And I, I just love those qualities of this where it feels so much like real life and then says we can explain why, why it's like that and why you never knew. Yeah, I I enjoyed that element a lot. I think it's such a fine line to walk to. And this actor is really good at walking it. He was also in um, this sort of horror comedy, Another Evil, a couple years ago where he plays similarly a very off-putting character, but you still find him funny. Uh, I, I do, because it's dangerous. You, you get very close to being like, well, now you're just annoying the audience, but he's so good that he just finally walks that line. I, I love that it shows that this show is going to also build out the mythology in the world that they introduced in the film. Yeah. They're going to show us new creatures and ones that we wouldn't even have thought to look for. I would yeah. have never thought that the energy vampire would be coming our way. Yeah, neither did I. Neither did I. And uh, the energy vampire, I feel like you're going to enjoy the variations on that and yeah. the way that they expand just that specific thing in this world. The one thing I'm curious to know what you thought of is uh, the inclusion of the werewolves. It's fine. Like, I... Yeah, of course. I love seeing the werewolves. It's interesting. They are completely different than the werewolves that we met before, like yeah. which were very polite, and maybe that's just very New Zealand. These are some Staten Island werewolves, <laughs> and they are they are swearwolves, and they are proud of it. Yeah, that that was one thing that. It didn't necessarily rub me the wrong way, but it didn't sit as well with me mm-hmm. as everything else in the show. But I imagine it's because, you know, we've only lightly dabbled in that portion of the world. And that's something that's going to be expanded. And the the gag in that episode was one of the hardest laughs I had in the show. I don't want to spoil oh, okay. it. Okay, I know but exactly what you're talking showdown. about. That that did work. That was yeah. very much out of left field and caught me off guard. <laughs> yeah. But, I, I, you know, I'm basically eager to see a little more of the werewolves and kind of get used to them being part of this whole scenario i'm i'm eager to see more of it all it all really works for me i just want to see more of it to see how i totally feel i think they made an interesting decision and i kind of get why but so you talked about how you don't feel like the through line of their mission sort of originally the episodes that we watched in the order we watched them the fourth one would have been the third one and the Third one would be the fourth one, I believe. Oh wow! Um, and I so I actually watched it twice. First in the order they gave it to us, and then second in the order it was originally intended. And it makes a huge difference to the way the story feels because I don't want to. I will not say what happens, but at the end of episode two, something very significant happens that you don't pick up on now until episode four. But if you tie them together, huh. they're immediately connected, and the story is a lot clearer. I am piecing it together exactly how you're explaining it, yeah. and that actually does make a lot of sense. And I think that might have changed my reaction to the werewolves. Yeah. That's funny. Okay, that's interesting to know. Um, another surprise that I was really happy to see in this, especially after falling so hard for the movie Booksmart at oh, South by Southwest, yes. is Beanie freaking Feldstein. She's so wonderful. Holy shit. There's another name to add to your list. If you are not familiar with her already, you are going to be soon because she popped up in Lady Bird. And I believe that's where, you know, at least in the film community, people started to get to know yeah. her name. She is I mean, above and beyond in that movie, Booksmart, directed by Olivia Wilde. It's her feature directorial debut, and she is one of the leads in it, and you're never going to forget that performance. And just to see her pop up here, it, it maybe it's because she's on my mind, but we don't even see her all that much so far in the show. But I keep wanting to go back to her. I keep I wanting to go back to that particular storyline. She is like the number one example of I can't wait for more of that. Yes. I cannot wait. Her reactions genuinely had me in giggle fits. 
Like, I can't say what she's reacting to, but especially in the fourth episode, I was dying. She it's is so, so talented. It's so funny you say that because one of the one of the greatest things in Booksmart is just, like, her facial expressions. Yeah. When she reacts to certain things, I can't really put into words why a certain look on her face makes me laugh out loud, but it's just something she does, and then you can't stop laughing. She has this quality as a performer that's exceptionally pegged between, like, uh, over the top, like theatrical performances, and very naturalistic and relatable, and it just slays me. Yeah. So I guess we're opening up our, our wishing hour fan club. We've now got <laughs> McKenna Grace, Logan Miller, and Beanie Feldstein. Absolutely. So when they all unite in a movie or a TV show, our heads will explode. <laughs> it's a good team. There's, I mean, this whole this whole show though really is a good team. I mean, I'm not going to pronounce these names correctly either, but I do want to give um, the rest of the main ensemble a little shout out here because I think they are a great pairing. And when you're following in the footsteps of a movie like what we do in the shadows, yeah. where, I mean, I love that house, that house full of people. I did not want to leave them and find new characters, but within four episodes, I mean, actually, I will say by the end of the first, I was already in love with these, mm. this this group here. I There was no transition period needed. I loved them. So there's also Nandor played by Kayvon Novak, and he is excellent. And then the third vampire in their little, uh, in their little trio, slash I guess quartet, because Colin lives with them too, is uh, Nadja played by... Uh, is that pronounced Natasha, maybe? Yeah. Natasha? Natasha Demetrio? Dim Dimitri. Dimitri. Again, we, we don't We know. can't pronounce your names just yet, but we love you. And we then will know. <laughs> there's also the element of the familiar here. And uh, Nandor's familiar is Guillermo, and he's played by Harvey Guilen. What do we think that accent on the E is doing? I'm so Guilen. bad at pronouncing Guilen. names, Guilen. I don't know. Guilen. That's like an accent I in French? I don't know. Okay, remember. but you I mean you are all phenomenal. And that's that's another element I think really stands out in the series is is how they work in the familiars. I really yeah. like his back and forths with Nandor and there's certain elements within the world where they reveal what certain familiars do and I am endlessly amused by them. I think he's such a standout and he uh, you know, in these mockumentary style workplace comedies, this is like workplace and domestic comedy, but it's definitely in vain with The Office and Parks and Rec. Yeah. Uh, you know you always have to have the characters who really mug at the camera and do reaction shots and look dead at it, and he's the best in the cast at that for me. Every time he just stares deep into the lens with like, are you fucking kidding me in his eyes yeah it kills me he's good and so is so is uh natasha yes D dimitrio oh my god i hope that's she's right she's like she's great too uh dry deadpan yeah one, which i love and she's got it she's yes. got it spot on the entire time um is there anything else we want to add about what we do in the shadows before we move on to our next mini review uh there are so many details that I'm excited for this to come out so everyone can see it so I can talk a little more specifically about it just like not to harp on Matt Berry but he is a goat and I freaking he's great. adore him I am a huge fan of his for life but his transformations make me laugh every time they're so stupid and silly but they make me laugh these you know these vampires can as they did in the movie, turn into bats and fly away, and it's very lo-fi and goofy looking yeah. and fun, but the way he does it specifically tickles me pink. Uh, yeah. It's so stupid. I like that this show has a really stupid, fun sense of humor, just as like the I. movie. It's unafraid to be relentlessly silly, goofy-ass jokes. I'm so into it. I'm excited for you guys to see it. I highly recommend this. I highly recommend it to anybody out there who loves the movie, What We Do in the Shadows, because again, it's like the series doesn't really skip a beat at all, and I love that it taps into what I, what I enjoyed so much about that movie. And also... Now that Ash vs. Evil Dead is like long gone in my life, it feels like this is filling a void. And it's not exactly mm. the same, but it is horror comedy in a, in a somewhat similar vein. And I, f I feel yeah. like I needed that. Oh, I feel like we didn't tap into it, but it's worth noting that this is a like very bloody show at times. Yeah. Like, just like <laughs> the film, it will shock you with rivers of blood at unexpected moments. At the most appropriate moments. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I quite enjoyed that. But um, I do I do suggest uh, checking it out. It kicks off on 
Oh gosh. March S- soon. It's 27th? Very, s- very soon. Did I make that up? I don't I'm not sure why can't I find it? I have the page open. No, you're right. March 27th. March 27th on FX. On FX. So check it out and then as you guys check more episodes out, we will then talk to you about it more. Yeah. Yes. So it's here it is. Premieres Wednesday, March 27th at 10 p.m. uh ETPT on FX. And then weekly episodes thereafter. So I'm looking forward to digging into this more in the coming weeks.